Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another Command & Conquer Rivals video. Now, I really missed doing CNC Rivals content, um, especially things like my patch note analysis and uh, intel report videos, and I really enjoyed doing the ranting video that came up a couple of days back. Actually, quite a few of you guys seem to have enjoyed that ranting video as well, so I've kind of decided, you know what, let's put those two concepts together, and we've got this video here. Now, I do apologise, I'm kind of looking up and down quite a lot here. What I'm going to be doing today is giving a video response to a post that popped up on the Command & Conquer Rivals subreddit. Details are on screen now to go and join that subreddit if you haven't already. And um, There's usually some pretty good con uh, like conversations going on there about balance and different events and tournaments and that kind of thing. Yeah, okay, you do get the uh, occasional guy who just goes on a massive rant because... Yeah, everything's overpowered except the units he's using, and he's always getting matched. The matchmaker is broken because he's always getting matched with people who are the perfect counter to his deck. Anyway, I'm not going to get into all of that now. What I am going to do is go through this particular post. Now, it was put up by uh, user Shaddai. I'm assuming I've pronounced that right. The first A is represented by the number four. Um, and it just kind of goes over some needed balance changes. Now, I want to kind of say first and foremost right off the bat, it shouldn't really need me saying, but this is the internet, so I'm going to say it anyway. I am arguing here with the points raised, not with the individual player. This is me giving my opinion on what Shaddai has said, and on whether or not I agree with him. Whether or not you agree with Shaddai, or whether or not you agree with me, whether you disagree with both of us and have your own opinions completely, that is absolutely fine. We are all allowed our own opinions. Everyone's opinion is valid. The difference between an opinion and a fact is something that some people do need to learn. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go through these points that Shaddai makes. Um, I'm going to give my opinion on those. And at the end of the video, I would love for you to give your opinion too. You can either give that in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think of that, uh, these thoughts. Um, or, better yet, get on the CNC Rivals subreddit and leave your comments on Shaddai's original post. The link is in the description. Anyway, let's jump right in. I'm talking entirely too long uh, about what the video is and not actually doing it. So I am kind of looking down here because I'm looking at my razor blade stealth. Okay, so the first thing he gives is Jade. Reduce damage of missile on base. I'm not going to lie that Jade's damage to the base itself, just the single missile, can be pretty heavy. It does require line of sight. Um, and certainly it requires a fair few missiles to actually deal the damage. I really like the idea of Jade missile, uh, Jade nuking the base directly. I think that's a really fun way to win the game, and I think that the game is more diverse because of it. Do I think it requires a bit more setup than just hit the base? Yes. In so much as I think reduced damage of missile on base is probably a good idea, as long as they also incre increase the damage of the explosions on the base. That is to say, currently, it takes one missile and five explosions, or two missiles and four explosions, uh, with two explosions each, to take off an entire half of the base's health. I think that's a healthy and fine tactic. I want that to still be the case, so the explosions generated by Tiberium gas exploding should do more to the base, but the, uh, the missile itself should do less. That means that you can't just hit the base just with anything. You do need to get that set up of putting the gas clouds down, then hitting those. That, to me, fixes it. It gets rid of the just spam the missile at the base while still keeping that base rush tactic for those who are skilled enough to set it up. Number two, Liang. Oh boy, I love it when I see Liang in patch notes and balance discussions. Drone should not be able to contest pads. Liang is supposed to be a healing commander, granted, but his drone is routinely used as a bailout to stall or flip pads. The drone is not subject to pop cap, which means the opponent, who may be pop capped, often cannot immediately build a unit that can kill it. All fair points. Other ideas to fix it. Drone can spawn anywhere on the map except pad, but this is then unmovable. This means units need to move to the drone to get healed. So it's a healing turret or obelisk of light. Dull, boring, it's an MSV, basically. Drone can only spawn within one tile of a friendly unit. This way, drone can't immediately spawn next to opponent's distant pad. It would need to travel to it. The drone requires line of sight. The drone cannot have the whole can't contest pads things. The balanced de uh, developers have previously stated that you can't just turn on or off whether or not a unit can interact with the pads. The drone interacting with the pads is a thing to come and stay. Personally, my opinions on how to fix Lang are twofold. 
Firstly, number one, all you need to do is make the drone count towards population cap. Yes, it's a temporary unit, which means it dies and then it releases that population cap after a short period of time. Or if it's destroyed, it releases that population cap. Exactly the same as the, like, drill pod uh, flame troopers do. Yes, okay, those can theoretically sit around permanently, but in fairness, they don't often. Uh, and that's kind of the point. It means it takes up a population cap for the duration of it being on the board, but as soon as it's gone, that population cap is released. I then think that the drone should move down to slower or slowest, which means you can't just spam it and then drag it onto the pad instantly for a very quick flick. You've actually got to kind of do it a little bit ahead of time, wait for it to spawn in, and then wait for it to move into position. To me, that gives a lot more counterability to it. I genuinely think that's probably all that Liang needs in regards to healing, uh, or just interchanges in general. I think the healing is pretty much fine as it is. Um, I think Liang works very well with certain units and not very well with certain others. And I kind of feel that that's the purpose of Liang, and that's how any commander really should be. That they work well with certain combinations, so the commander isn't just something that you slap onto the end of the deck because this one's best. It's something that you actually consider for the place of your deck. Speaking of commanders, Solomon! Reduce the cost of the Ion Cannon to 130 and reduce cooldown by 5 seconds. Reduce damage of Ion Cannon to base to discourage Ion Cannon base kills. <sighs> well, I think if you... Mm, I mean two minds on this one big time. Reducing the cost of the Ion Cannon to 130, yeah, fair enough. Reducing the cooldown by 5 seconds, I feel 5 seconds is probably a bit much. 3, maybe, especially if it's getting cheaper. Um, reducing it by 5 seconds and reducing it by what, 20 Tiberium, that is actually quite a significant reduction to how frequently you can, uh, in, quite, sorry, considerable increase to how frequently you can spam it, as in you can spam it much more at that point. Solomon, the Iron Cannon, can work incredibly well. I've watched tournaments where guys have used it as surgical strikes before, um, and that is just, that's something that excites me so much when I see it, because it's, it's just hilarious that you're watching this game, and it looks like so-and-so is going to win, and then zoom, bang, down it comes, and the game just flips on its head. It's amazing, and I love it. Thing is, if you make the cannon too powerful, it kind of gets, it, it's in that, that difficult to balance zone, that if you make it too powerful, it just becomes like, you're, you're complaining here that, that Liang can just flip a missile without, uh, without thought. Solomon can clear an entire pad in seconds. An entire pad. If they've got three units on it, that pad is empty when that ion cannon goes off, as long as they're not like titans and mammoths. To me, I think 130 in a cooldown of five seconds is a bit much. 130 and three seconds I'd be fine with. Maybe even 120 and three seconds I'd be fine with. And um, reduce damage of ion cannon to the base. I think ion cannon damage on the base is fine as it is right now. What I would perhaps consider as an even better way of doing this and reduce the cost of the Ion Cannon to maybe even 100, reduce the cooldown by 5 seconds, but increase the time that it takes to actually fire the darn thing. It gives you that little bit of time to quickly micro a unit out of the way, but something that's harder to move, like say an MLRS or MSV or, I don't know, like an artillery, those take a bit more time to get out of the way, and the Ion Cannon is likely to one-shot those, but you can't just immediately ban it. I'm in two minds on this one, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Kane, oh boy, everyone's favourite sucker boy in this uh, in this game. Enable Obelisk to skip kill squads in one shot, or increase fire rate significantly while reducing damage so it becomes useful against infantry. Absolutely not, 100% disagree. I want Kane to be relevant in this game probably as, as much, if not more, than most people. I really want Kane to be relevant. Poor guy, just, the, the, the icon of the Command & Conquer series, is, is, oh, it's just been such a bad time for him in Rivals. Um, no, this is not the way to do it. Kane used to be ridiculously powerful. He then got hit with many, many nerfs because you know what? If you don't have the right counters, Kane becomes oppressive. Um, what you're saying there is I want it to be able to kill all ground units instantly. Any of them. Gone. No. Do not do that. I, I, I am a massive proponent of saying that every deck should have at least one air unit in it. I am genuinely in belief of that. But at the same token, you're asking for, a, a, for a, a, an ability that you just put, put down on the board and bam, it destroys all ground instantly in areas around it. No, 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 no. You need to be able to have some good viable counters. Currently, squad units are pretty much the only viable ground counter to uh, the Obelisk of Light. So, <laughs> yeah, no. 
For me, Kane, I think, could be fixed by significantly reducing the cost of his ability and significantly reducing the damage whilst making it fire a bit more frequently. Not a significant rate of fire increase um, with reduced damage because, again, it shouldn't be good against infantry. It, it, it just shouldn't be. Again, Kane, I just don't know. I don't know what to do with Kane. I don't think the devs do either, and that, that's kind of an issue. Kane has either been ridiculously oppressive or utter trash. Shocks and flames increase speed to fast, no, or reduce cost to 30, also no. These units have largely fallen out of the meta and need a significant buff to remain relevant. In all honesty, they might need both buffs to reclaim relevance. No, if you gave them both buffs, they're going to just dominate again. There was a period in time iconised by uh, Terminus running what he called the Flamer Festival, because flamers were everywhere. There was no point running anything. Right now, Shocks and Flames will win against Riflemen. Well, will win against pretty much any infantry if they can get into contact with it. I don't think making Shocks and Flames move faster is the right thing to do. Cost reduction, definitely not. These guys were all over the meta at one point, and doing either of those things just puts them flat out in the centre of it. Again, we've been there. I'm not going back to that, please. Flames and Shocks are already tanky. They already melt any infantry to come close to them. The problem with Shocks and Flames ultimately comes down to Fanatics, which we'll come on, uh, come on to in just a moment. Um, shocks, and, uh, shocks and Flames are great at melting any infantry, they are brilliant against structures, they move fast enough that they can get into position, but not so fast that they can just outrun everything. You want to move them to fast, you want to make flame, you know, flamethrower guys with massive power packs on their back, and like shockwave troopers, the same speed as snipers? No. You want these guys to be able to outrun a Talon? No. This is not going to happen, these are not good ideas, think. When you're going to write a, a Reddit post, I said I wasn't going to like attack the, the author of this, uh, only the ideas. In this case, I'm not attacking the author directly. Shaddai, this isn't directed at you, this is directed as a whole to anyone who wants to talk about balance. You've got to look at the big picture and understand that every little change you make affects everything. Everything. The fact that Shocks and Flames take that little bit long, if you upped their health, and that they take that little bit longer to kill. That is a nerf to Talons, and to Venoms, and to Shatterers, and to Chem Warriors, and to Buggies, and to all of these things, because they now take longer to do their job against this particular unit. Reducing these guys to 30 is going to negate any form of infantry in the game. Right now, Shocks and Flames' only issue is that they don't stand up with Fanatics. That's all. And we're going to come to that now. Fanatics reduce vehicle damage to be on par with Shocks and Flames. I'm in two minds again on this one. I think Fanatics kind of need to be able to do a little bit of damage to vehicles so that they don't just die to War Dogs and to Cyber Wheels. Should they do as much as they do? Probably not. Should they do as much as they do to other infantry units? No. No. Um, Fanatics ultimately... Their infantry damage, as it currently stands, is fairly close to what a flame and shock troop unit can do, a shockwave trooper unit can do already. They should do less. They should definitely beat militant squads. 100% they should beat militant squads. I don't think that they should be beating flames or, uh, or, or shockwave troopers without significant numbers. Fanatics are designed to die. Yes, they need to be somewhat scary so that they can, you know, so that your opponent is actually incentivized to kill them if you... If you make fanatics utterly useless at doing anything, then no one's going to bother to attack them, because why would I bother killing this unit when killing it buffs something, and it, it, it being alive isn't negatively affecting me? It's, it's like, why would, I build why would I build anything that can kill enemy missile troopers when I don't have any vehicles or aircraft on the field right now? Fanatics, I think, a slight reduction to the damage they have against vehicles, fair point. I think Fanatics are either better served by getting a reduction to the damage they do to infantry, very minor reduction, albeit, or possibly even having a speed decrease. Make Fanatics move slightly slower. Tougher to get into position. I'm fine with that. I, I would be fine with that. Shatterer, revert its, revert its speed nerf. I personally don't have a problem with Shatterers. I use Shatterers quite a bit recently, actually. Um, been running Shatterers and Slingshots quite a lot. I don't have a major issue with them. Could I see a problem with having the speed nerf reverted and them getting a bit of that speed back? No, I'd be fine with that. I would be fine with that. They could probably use it. 
um, just to get them into position a little bit faster. I think more than having a speed nerf, uh, like having the speed nerf reverted, I think making them turn a little bit faster just might do it so that when they get into position they actually turn and face their target that little bit faster. Um, and that they can turn and get out of the way, like if a, you know an enemy bike squad or pit bull is coming at them, they don't take ages just to slowly rotate and move off the pad. <sighs> I'm not against the speed nerf. I'm not against. Uh, I'm not against reverting the speed nerf. I'm not against buffing their speed. Jump jet troopers. Oh boy, I, I I read this one ahead of time. This is this is wild. They perform too poorly against chem buggies and cyber wheels. To fix this, increase their rate of fire and decrease damage proportionally. They need to be able to shoot a chem buggy three times before death. Currently, they only get two shots off before death. So that two JJT squads can actually kill a chem buggy. 80 cost JJTs versus 60 cost chem buggy. Yeah, I, I agree with that maths. That works. The increased rate of fire will also rightfully help their matchup versus wheels. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by the matchup versus wheels. Currently, you need two wheel squads to take down jump jet troopers. And jump jet troopers are fast enough that if they see two wheel squads, they can move out of the way and just 1v1. And then when the second squad gets in, they can just pull back out of that. I also, just the reason I said this is wild, this is going back to my point that when you're going to post balance ideas, you need to actually read what you're writing and think about what kind of sense that makes and how it all fits in. You say here, currently, they need to be able to shoot a buggy three times. With their current damage, they need to be able to shoot a buggy three times before they die in order to kill it. They currently only get two shots on fire death. But then you've just said that you want to decrease the damage that they do as well, meaning that even if they did three shots now with decreased damage, they're still only going to do two. I think part of the, the point here is that JJTs ultimately are not designed to take on things like a chem buggy. If you want infantry to deal with an anti-infantry unit, Grenadiers are probably your best bet for that, thanks to the EMP. Jump Jet Troopers' big advantage is that they can hit fairly hard and they move fast and over things. Jump Jet Troopers should die to chem buggies. Do I wish that Jump Jet Troopers, like two of them, could kill a chem buggy? I'm actually pretty sure that if you have two defending uh, Jump Jet Trooper squads and a chem buggy drives into the middle of them, the Jump Jet Trooper squads comfortably win on that one. I'm pretty certain. So... I'm fine with jump jet troopers being the way they are, and I'm fine with them dying hard to, to, to chem buggies. Otherwise, they just become ridiculously powerful and good again. Laser drones. Reduce HP of each drone that, so that two shots from a buggy or rhino kills each one. Currently, it takes three shots from a bino ruggy to kill a drone. This will give bino, uh, buggy rhino a place in the current laser drone meta. I don't think nerfing the drones is the right way about that, because nerfing the drones means they're suddenly going to die to things like the slingshot even faster, and they're going to die to um, missiles and laser squads even faster. I think in fairness here, I'd be happier giving buggy and rhinos just that little teeny tiny touch of extra anti-air damage. That's my thoughts on this one, that you're looking at the wrong unit there. If you want the buggy and rhino to be better against drones, Make the buggy and rhino better against drones. Don't make the drones worse against everything. Miscellaneous. Bikes interaction versus laser drones is broken. Often three bike missiles somehow only kill a single drone or two drones. Yeah, 100% that does need to be fixed. We've had so many issues with that over the years. Um, well, over the year of Rivals being live. And in fact, with it being in beta, this has been a bug that has come and gone so many times. It, it, it may as well be Icy Baby getting muted. Um, on the main Discord. Um, the bikes, yes, they need fixing. 100% that, that bike interaction needs fixing. I agree, think that, like, even the same goes with stealth tanks. Stealth tanks should one volley an entire drone squadron of laser drones, because there's four drones and there's four rockets, and those rockets do more than enough damage to kill each drone, so it should just go boom, boom, done. It's hard. It's harder than that, I know, because the game has kind of got to go right. The first missile has hit and the set and been killed, so now the, the second missile needs to go to the second drone. Has that been killed? Yes, we need to go to the third drone. And when it's something is firing as fast as a stealth tank, or indeed as fast as a bike is going you know, three out in one go, that's not as easy as just kind of fixing. You kind of have to change how those units that unit has to actually analyse the situation in front of it before it fires, rather than as it's firing. It has to sit there and go, right, I'm about to fire three rockets. Will one of these rockets kill one of the things I'm firing at? And that's not as easy as it sounds, because I know that I'm making that sound really easy right now, but then what happens when you've got four rockets 
and you're firing against two targets or you've got uh, three things from like the bike squad the bike doesn't have like an ammo bar bikes just fire so you've got three bikes against two enemy bikes the game now needs to decide which rocket hits which and uh, it becomes a little bit more complex I'm a programmer can explain that better than I can I've got in my head how that works. It's not an easy fix, but yes, it is absolutely one that happens. And now that we've got Avanash and the guys back on the scene, I'm looking forward to seeing that one fixed, because that would make bikes that much better. Which brings me to a final closing point that is not in this, uh, in this, in this discussion, and that's in regards to bikes. We were having an interesting conversation on the community Discord earlier about attack bikes and their place in the game. Currently, people asking for attack bike nerfs. I am 100% vehemently opposed to any form of attack bike nerf right now. Attack bikes have been hit with nerf after nerf after nerf after nerf. People are not using attack bikes because they're good. People are using attack bikes because they are necessary. Because there is nothing else early on in a, G in a, in a Nod Player's arsenal that can take on anti-vehicle and anti-air effectively. For GDI, if you want to take on... Uh, in, if you want to take on aircraft early on in the game, you've got your missile squads, you've got slingshots, which are fairly cheap, you've got pit bulls, which are fairly cheap, you've got talons, that's four units cheaply can take out air, uh, aircraft. Against ground vehicles, again, you've got uh, missile squads, you've got grenadiers, you've got jump jet troopers, you've got pit bulls. Those are all nice and cheap, I think... I'm not going to include Mohawks in that because the rule I've kind of mentally set is for less than 100 Tiberium, and opening up an air, an air, a helipad and buying a mohawk is 110 by my current maths, am I thinking that rightly? Which is over the limit. For Nod, on the other hand, if you want to take out vehicles early on for less than 100 Tiberium to buy one unit, you have, and I'm not including scavengers in this. No, you know what, fuck, um, screw it, I'm including scavengers in this. So you've got scavengers, you've got laser squads, you've got mutant marauders for infantry. That's all very well and good until you come up against something that is anti-infantry. Um, for vehicles, you have attack bikes. For aircraft you have laser drones. Banshee costs again 110, same as the Mohawk. If you then go to want to take out aircraft, say you want to take out a Venom, you have laser squads or scavengers, which are not going to do it. You then have attack bikes or in the uh, air tower you have nothing. That, that's three units. Three units to theoretically GDI's, what I think, four or five. Attack bikes are only so prevalent with Nod because they are necessary. They are necessary to Nod right now because there are no good alternatives out there. You nerf attack bikes, you are buffing absolutely everything that is aircraft or vehicle related against Nod. Currently, Nod already struggles when it comes to things like dealing with enemy Venoms or Mohawks or... Uh, things like this, because they don't have as many options as GDI does against these things. Taking away that option, not the right way about it. Anyway guys, I have gone on entirely long enough. I'm looking at the clock now. We're coming up towards 24 minutes, which is much longer than I really wanted to spend on this, but I had a lot to say. If you're listening at this point, thank you ever so much. Big thumbs up to you guys for listening right the way through to the end. I am always, always grateful for that. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. I love to hear what you guys are saying, as long as it's polite and friendly. I am not going to take personal attacks. I am not going to have dumbass comments and shit like that. Yes, I said shit. We're halfway through a video. I'm fine with that. I'm not re-recording this because of that one word. Two words because I said it again. But basically, be polite and you get your comment to stay. Be rude and I'll delete it. And I'll delete it in such a way that nobody will ever even know it's been deleted power of YouTube content creator. Anyway guys, again, thank you ever so much for watching. Happy sailing and see you on those battlefields.